So here's a wafer lock. It has all of these little, well, wafers. Just a bunch of these inside of it that interact with the key in various ways depending on which type of wafer lock it is. And they move up and down. And in a normally locked position, some of these will be binding up against the housing. So this lock will not turn. If you stick in the right key, which has all the correct cut depths, then it puts all of those wafers flush and the lock will turn and it is operational now. If you put in a key that is not cut to all the correct depths, it will have some of them, some of them may be flush, but as you can see, we have some that are binding up against the wall, preventing this from being opened. So that is a basic overview on how a wafer lock works. Now there's a couple ways to actually decode these. You can use a leashy, which I like to do a lot, which is basically a pick that once you open it, you can then read the cut depths from the inside of the lock. I have a different video on how that works. Um, the other way is if you actually take apart the lock, I've just taken apart or taken one of these wafers out quick and you can see there's a number one that's marked on there. So that would be the number one depth for that wafer. Um, so you can, if you want to, take the whole lock apart and individually read these wafers. And you can do that, but sometimes these locks are tricky and have a lot of tiny pieces and springs. And you may not want to lose all of that um, if you're not experienced in uh, put, you know, taking these apart, doing this out in the field with somebody's actual lock might cause you problems until you kind of figure out how all that works. Um, but if you have a lock, like a lot of these Fords and a lot of other ones where you can actually see the wafers without taking anything apart, then you can use this method to visually decode it if you are able to remove the lock. So in order to decode it, you need to basically make yourself a set of depth keys. And all depth, the depth keys are is a key that has all of the positions cut to the same depth. So when you have a key like this inserted into that lock, whatever wafer is going to be a one cut is going to sit flush with this key so I can mark it as a one cut. If I put in the number four cut depth, whatever wafer is that four cut is gonna sit flush with this key. So I just stick in whatever key, um, just go down the row, one, two, three, four, maybe five if there's five depths, six if there's six depths, whatever. Um, you need a different set of keys for each individual type of lock, but we're just gonna demonstrate on these since it's only four depths and it's pretty simple and straightforward. So for instance, all of these, well, let me actually uh, put this wafer back so we're not missing anything. Let me, all right, let me put this wafer, it actually, oops. Yeah, so you gotta be careful because the second one just fell out. So this one will go here. And this one will go here. All right. I'm very familiar with taking these locks apart, so I am comfortable doing this. But until you get used to it, I wouldn't recommend doing it to actual customers' vehicles or customers' locks. Um, so anyway, so focus, darn you. Thank you. So we'll take out the correct key and we'll notice that some of these are now going to sit in a position where it will not allow it to turn. So let's start with the number one. And we can see that if we put that all the way in, um, the ones that are sitting flush are going to be, let's keep this in frame here. We got a one, a three, and a six are going to be sitting flush if you can see that. The two is close, but it's not quite flush. And there's a couple other ones that are close, but they're not quite flush. So it's going to be a one, a three, and a six. So what I like to do is, I've already decoded this, but I like to draw a picture 
with a little arrow to know which way the tip of the key is so I don't get this backwards. And then since we know a one, the third wafer and the sixth wafer is a one cut, I'm just gonna mark those with a one. So then we go to the second key. So we'll take this out and we'll put the number two key in, which is just the second depth. And we'll look closely at that. And if we look closely, to me, it looks like number two. And is that all the way in? It might just be number two. Well, it might not be all the way in. Yeah, that's not all the way in. Got to make sure your key is all the way in. There we go. So lube these locks up before you, you work with them. It makes everything easier. So it's going to be a number two, and it looks like a number seven are going to be the flush wafers. The ones that are really close, don't, don't look at those because they have to be absolutely flush. You can see how this one is and this one isn't. It's close, but it's not enough. If we flip it over, this is the number six wafer. If we flip it over, then we can see it's actually protruding on this side and is blocking it on the opposite side. So even though it looks good from the other side, this side is going to be too far out. So it's going to be a number two and a number seven for a number two cut. So number two and number seven are a number two cut. And... So four, five, and eight are on number three, according to my already decoded schematic. So let's take the number three, and we can see that four right here, five right here, and eight are flush. So we know that those are a number three cut, and this lock doesn't actually have any number four cuts. Um, so we've already decoded it, and you can see that if we stick the number four in, literally nothing is even remotely close to flush besides maybe that one right there, but that's that's not enough. So we have decoded it. We know what the bidding is now. And we know which direction the tip is so we don't get that confused and we can literally just go to our key cutter and uh, input this information or cut it manually whatever system you're using and that is how you will make a key for this just by visually decoding it so yeah that's a quick overview on how depth keys work um, i've actually decoded this law or this key on my key cutter so i'll put a picture of that up just to make sure we have the information correct and to show you that this method does actually work so here is this uh, volkswagen lock that we just decoded there's what we got for the information and i'm just gonna manually decode it just to verify that this method does work and it's accurate so we're gonna turn this thing on go to we can either either way but let's just go to Volkswagen jet and then 05 on eight cuts for eight wafers and there we go so it's the M2C clamp which I have in there and it wants me to line it up where this ridge is at the edge of the clamp, so just like this. So hold on, I'll put it in there quick. So just like that, and then we're literally just going to click decode, and this probe will go down it.
and just kind of touch everything and figure out what depths are what. So there we go. So depending on your key cutter or whatever else you have, um, this this is going to be opposite from what we got. Let me focus this thing. So remember how we were sticking the key in this way to decode it. This is actually running the numbers that way. So if we go three two one three three one two one we have three two one three three one two one we have it right but just due to the fact that we're decoding it looking at the lock this way and this key machine wants it that way we just got to reverse the numbers so there you go that's you know reverse engineered this key more or less to show you guys that this does actually work and, uh, it's a quick easy method if you're to use it um, there is another way to visually decode it if you don't have, um, like if you haven't made depth keys and you literally just have one blank key. Um, I'll show you another video of how to do that coming up, of how to basically cut this down one at a time and get down to the right bidding. Uh, it's not terribly complicated, but it's a little bit of a... A learning curve on that so look out for that uh, thanks for watching and uh, hope this helps some people